Children from hard places need parents who feel equipped to help them heal and grow no matter what. That takes preparation, education, support, and the services families need when they need them. In partnership with eight sites, the National Quality Improvement Center for Adoption and Guardianship Support and Preservation tested promising practices and evidence-based models of support and intervention along a continuum. Eight interventions in five intervals, each focusing on a different level of risk. Together, the intervals represent the needs a family may encounter along the lifelong journey of adoption or guardianship. New Jersey focused its intervention on selective prevention. Introducing Tint, tuning into teens. This is New Jersey, the Garden State, where adoptive and guardianship families are discovering new opportunities to flourish. Tuning into Teens is a parenting workshop that allows families to come in and develop communication and other skills that will help them relate in a, on an emotional level to their youth. New Jersey falls on the selective interval in the continuum. Selective prevention targets children who, at the time of adoption or guardianship, exhibited characteristics or behaviors that put them at increased risk for post-permanency discontinuity. Tuning into Teens was developed by Dr. Sophie Havinghurst, along with her colleagues Anne Harley and Christiane Kehoe at the University of Melbourne. We wanted to develop a parenting program where emotions were the central part, not changing kids' behaviour, but helping parents to connect with kids when they're emotional. Tuning into Teens is a seven-week workshop. Each workshop is two hours in length, and each week new topics are discussed, building on the old ones, with the theme of emotion coaching and emotion identifying throughout. When we're teaching emotion coaching for parents of teens, we're really encouraging them to just come towards a child at those emotional moments, to connect with them at those, emo those times, to help the child learn about and understand their emotions and develop that emotional competence. The goal really, and, and the foundation of this program, is to, to raise an emotionally intelligent child. We wanted it to be a program that would be accessible to all families, all parents with the idea that these are a universal set of skills about connecting with our kids. The New Jersey site team adapted tuning into teens for adoptive and guardianship families with children between 10 and 13 years old. Six weekly sessions became seven sessions with an adoption overlay. The adaptations really had to do with the unique challenges that adoptive families face. There were several points along the way in which it was necessary to say, okay, how is that different for an adoptive or formed family? Our primary research question in New Jersey is, will the target population who received TINT have better outcomes compared to similar children who don't receive TINT? It's tough stuff. They've gone through adverse experiences, abuse and neglect. They've been taken away from birth parents, maybe multiple caregivers, and they have been hurt. We know that uh, the pre-adolescent years and the adolescent years come with a lot of change. Hey. Hey. What's going on? Hey, it's important to uh, support families because the child that you bring home and you adopt at age three is not the person that you're going to be living with at 14 or 15. It's a lifelong commitment and it's just like parenting is and, and they need support throughout the life of that child. In August of 2016, Sophie Havinghurst traveled from Australia to New Jersey to train selected facilitators from across the state. For three days, participants immersed themselves in tent. Our facilitators for the Tuning Into Teens program are some of the best and ex most experienced adoption professionals in the state of New Jersey. By the time we finished the training, um, people really understood the philosophy incredibly well. They'd all tried everything out themselves at a personal level. Because the whole idea is if you get it personally, you'll be able to deliver it to families. So what did you guys do in school today? When Sharon Johnston's grandsons were six and 15, she became their kinship legal guardian. This is kindergarten, do you remember that? Now they are 14 and 23. Donovan is 14 
and he is the most lovable, cutest kid you could imagine. He's got the biggest smile. Oh, it was basketball, you were undefeated. Yeah, and then we lost in championship again. <laughs> you lost again in championship. He's yeah. the athlete in the family, but he's very intelligent. And then you want to step with your foot and just let it go. He uses his charm to get away with stuff in school. He's my challenge. After 32 years, Sharon's marriage ended. Around the same time, her daughter went to rehab for heroin addiction. It was only a three month program and I kept the boys. I imagined that my daughter was gonna get better and that it was temporary and that she was going to get her life back in order, get off drugs and take her family back. But she didn't act like a person who was interested in raising their kids. And that's when Dyfus came and asked me to take custody back. After raising three birth children, Candy Bay and her husband became foster parents. Eventually, they adopted several of the children in their care, including Nassar and his sister, Princess. What brought me to wanting to adopt children was the way I was brought up. Because see, nobody deserves to go through some of the things that I went through. Take deep breaths in. Release, nice and slow. I just wanted to show as many kids as much love and stability as I possibly can. You relaxed? <laughs> they could get frustrated at times and I can, you know, you want to throw your hands up and say, okay, maybe this was a mistake, but it wasn't a mistake. It wasn't a mistake. What did you do in school? I received a phone call. Um, and the lady, she said, um, hi, you know. This is Arlene, I'm calling from the Adoption Operations Office. And we're, we have a brand new program that we just brought to New Jersey that we want to offer you. So all of a sudden, you know, I have somebody calling it and they want to know if I want to take a course. And it focuses on emotional coaching and communicating and connecting with your preteens. Really, it's preventative. I said, well, let me just say this to you. I have three adult children, so I pretty much think I got it covered on how to take care of a teenager, but I'm willing to learn more. It's the first time anybody had ever reached out to me, and I was like, sure, I'll do it. And we hope that the skills that you'll learn will really build the foundation for when you get into those older years where sometimes it can become very challenging. I was like, yes, because I had just hit that. He's 13, he was going on 14. So I was like, I need help, yes, yes, I'll do it. So she said, okay, I'm gonna send you some information in the mail, you fill out this information and you send it back to us. So that's what I did. So here I am. <laughs> Thank you everyone for coming back. Welcome back to Tuning Into Teens. I went to the class and I was, I loved Rebecca. It was like, she's, up there teaching and she's teaching my story. Because a lot of times our kids are so overwhelmed with so many different emotions. And I was like, that's me. Oh, that's me. Like, that's my story. I didn't feel alone anymore. So does anybody want to start and let us know how your week went? You're sitting there, you have your story, and then you're, you're listening to the story of another woman and you feel like, wow, there's somebody out here who's going through the same thing. It just kind of felt good. Um, so every now and then he, you know, goes into a depressed state worrying about his mom, um, who's in the street addicted to drugs and... At that age, at 14, how do you say to a kid, your mom is not good for you? Without hurting his feelings. What do you do? Uh, Candy, would you like to fishbowl it for us? Would you like to come on up and do a fishbowl? So if you guys remember what we talked about last week, a big part of what we're gonna be doing over the next, our next few weeks together is role playing and fishbowling, right? So fishbowl is when we have a parent come up and be their kid. So not explain the situation to us, but really play how your kid would be. It allows um, the person in the fishbowl to be able to hear those messages, right. to feel what it feels like, to feel the difference between dismissive and emotion coaching. So we're first gonna be that dismissive parent. Nassar, why do you always act like that? I just said I don't feel like talking about it. Don't roll your eyes at me. We role played every class. The very first time I did it, 
I, I was so stunned. I was the teenager and I could feel the animosity building up in me and I'm like, wait a minute, this isn't even me or my problem, but I felt it. Okay, so let's stop right there. <laughs> so what was that like for you? What, what feeling did you get? What, what message did you get from all of us? Thank you. It's not, it's not I'm not important. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna do the emotion coaching. And then when we did it the positive way, I felt good and I thought, oh my gosh, this is what he feels like. I didn't expect to experience that. So some of the key concepts of emotion coaching, uh, tuning in, noticing the emotion, um, connecting and teaching, accept and listen. Reflecting the emotion, so we're actually labeling that emotion. And then we end with problem solving, only when appropriate. All right, so same role play. Nassar, I see that there's something bothering you. I had to say to myself, okay, Candy, you may not do things this way, but that might be the better way to do it. I don't want you to think that I don't love you, but I really just love and miss my mom a whole lot. It can be hard, yeah. huh? Yes. That's tough. All right, so let's stop there. Mm -hmm. What did that feel like for you? What did this, this time around feel like for you? I didn't know I was gonna have feelings. I thought I was just up here acting, but I did. I felt the difference, and I wanted, I wanted Don to feel the good difference. And so you can see how the first time, we didn't even get to anything about him missing birth mom, right? right. We didn't even get to any of that. But this time, we were able I didn't even realize I was, I was coming out in a, in a negative fashion to create him to come back at me, you know? So then when he came back at me, I said, you're back talking. And it was, a, it just became a vicious circle. And I'm learning at this table that there's some things I didn't know. So, you know, you just have to really pay attention. You know what's remarkable about tuning into teens is after the first week, we hear a lot of people coming back to week two and talking about using the skills they've learned. I couldn't wait to get home and try it out. All right, so we want to talk a little bit about um, your home activities for the week. Again, I know... Donovan, can you come help me with my homework? You have homework? <laughs> I do have homework. You know, you say it in the classroom, but then you come home and it's, an, you know, then I got Donovan. It's, <laughs> he's, he's not my um, classroom partner. He's Donovan. She would ask me, like, like, let's talk about our feelings. And she asked out of nowhere, and I was like, Oh, why? You've never, you've never done this before. And like, I could tell she was like trying, but it was like, it was just funny whenever she would do it. Like, it made me laugh. Listen to your teen's music with them? No. <laughs> Attend your teen's sporting events? Yes. Okay, is there anything else that you think of we could do together? We could maybe like agree on like a TV show or a movie to watch at home. Yeah, I like that one. The whole idea around a prevention program is that you give people a set of skills that they go away and keep on using. Also, not every parent needs to execute the program the way it's in the textbook. That they really should just adjust it to what, they, um, what works for their family. I'm thankful because not only do um, I teach you, but you guys teach me as well. You know, watching you grow up. And the class was wonderful. The teachers were excellent. I learned so much from them. You know, I took in a lot of information from them. So how, how can we help Khalil to deal with that? Like I was taught how to deal with different personalities and you know, to be able to recognize when there's something going on with your kid. Um, something I be, I'm frustrated about is like, the most important thing to me is family because they always have my back and I don't have to like hold anything back from them and I can express myself to them. But sometimes you get a parent who comes along and by the end of a program, the thing that they say that they're doing the most is that they're actually just building in a pause before they react with huge anger. You take a breath, you pause. That works, there's not me hollering and there's not him back talking. So then when we're able to come back together, it's more civil. And that's changed a dynamic in that family. And that might be a, a very, very big step. So you know why I'm taking this class, right? So you can 
like it's a mean you can communicate better. One of the reasons tuning into teens has been so successful here in New Jersey is that we never lost focus on the families. When I um, took you on to raise you, I didn't feel I did a good job with your mom. So I took the class so you and I can stay connected. This idea of building the skills for our families to connect emotionally really is, hits home for the families that we're working with here in New Jersey. I think it's a wonderful tool for self-reflection and out of that, um, the potential for improving communication and relationship is really significant. How do you feel about that? Good. Good? Yeah. Think we're doing okay? Yeah. I can't do it by myself because one, I've never dealt with this situation before. And two, I'm willing to learn. I'm crisscross applesauce. These are my kids. Teach me.